Can we solve the equation x to the y equals y to the x? You might want to pause and think if you can find any other solutions to this equation. The first thing I did after thinking about it for a little while is to go to Desmos and to plot the graph. And if I put that in here, you can see this is all of the solutions, at least the ones here for positive x and y, of x to the y equals y to the x. You can see the solution that we had already here at 2, 4 at this point, x equals 2, y equals 4. And of course, I get the symmetric point x equals 4, y equals 2. They both represent 2 to the 4 being equal to 4 to the 2. And in fact, we get this symmetry in the line y equals x because of that. And in fact, any point on the line y equals x corresponds to a solution as well, because if x and y are the same, like x equals 3 and y equals 3, then the equation becomes 3 to the 3 equals 3 to the 3. And there's no doubt that it holds in that case. So the interesting part of this graph is this curve where our 2, 4 and 4, 2 solutions were. And in the rest of this video, I'm going to show you how you can find other points on this curve and a really, really fascinating result about how we can find some quite nice points that lie on these curves. And the limit of those points is going to lead us to this point where the graphs intersect. And that's going to be a very, very interesting mathematical constant at that point. You might be able to take a first guess at what it might be from looking at the coordinates here. Now to make this a bit easier, we're going to play a little trick and we're going to make a substitution y is equal to k times x. And for any pair of values that work here, it must be the case that y is some number times x. So I'm not losing anything uh, by doing this. I'm going to substitute this into the equation and I'm going to get that x to the k times x then is equal to k times x uh, to the power of x. Now x to the k times x, that's x to the k to the power of x. And on this side, I've got kx to the power of x. If I raise both sides to the power 1 over x, then I get that x to the k is equal to k times x. You might just worry about whether we're losing solutions at this step, but my aim here isn't really to find all the solutions. I just want to find some solutions. And so certainly something that satisfies this equation will satisfy the original one. Now, if I divide both sides by x, we get x to the k minus 1 is equal to k. And then I get that x is equal to k to the 1 over k minus 1, raising both sides to the power of 1 over k minus 1. So this parameter k gives us a kind of formula to come up with solutions to x to the y equals y to the x. And if we hadn't already seen the graph, we now know that there are infinitely many solutions, not including the ones on the line y equals x, right? Because I can just take, for example, uh, k equals 2 here and then plug this in. So if I take my uh, x value, I get a 2 to the 1 over 2 minus 1, which is 2 to the 1 over 1, which is just 2. And then the y value is just k times the x value. So that's 2 times 2, which is 4. And I recover the solution we already knew. But equally, I could take k equals 3, say, and then I would get x equals 3 to the 1 over 2, or the square root of 3. And then this time, y would be k times x. So that would be 3 times uh, root 3. And that would give us another pair of values that works. And so we would know that root 3 to the 3 root 3 is the same as 3 root 3 to the root 3. And by continuing to choose values of k, we can find more and more solutions to this equation. And they'll all be on this line that we were looking at here. A natural question is, can we find any more nice solutions? So the last one, root 3 and 3 root 3, had irrational numbers. Can we find any that are perhaps whole numbers like 2, 4, or at least rational numbers? The answer is that we can. And at the end, we're actually going to end up with a really incredible result about this point where the two lines intersect as well. Now, I think the easiest way to find nice answers here is to try to insist that this power in the k to the 1 over k minus 1 is a whole number. So let's say we let n be equal to 1 over k minus 1, or I'm thinking that I'm going to later choose n to be a natural number, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Then rearranging this, I get k minus 1 equals 1 over n, or k equals 1 plus 1 over n. So then we can see that x is k to the 1 over k minus 1. Well, k is 1 plus 1 over n, and 1 over k minus 1, that's n. So x is 1 plus 1 over n to the n. And for the corresponding y value, y is equal to k times x. But k is this uh, 1 plus 1 over n. So I'm just multiplying this by another 1 plus 1 over n. 
and this gives me one plus one over n to the n plus one. So for any n, this pair will give me a solution to x to the y equals y to the x. And this allows me to generate a set of nice solutions to x to the y equals y to the x. If I start with n equals one, I get x equals one plus one over one, which is two to the power of one. Uh, so that's just two. And then y is going to be uh, two to the two, which is four. That's that solution we've found many times now. So if I go to n equals two, I get one plus one over two squared uh, for x, and for y, I get one plus one over two cubed. So I've got that x equals three over two squared, and y equals three over two cubed. So I found that x equals nine over four, and y equals 27 over eight. We're not actually going to find any more whole numbers, but we do get at least some rational numbers that satisfy this. And I keep going with the sequence over n equals three, I'm going to get x equals one and a third here, which is four thirds cubed, and y is going to be four thirds to the power of four. And I can just keep going, right? n equals four gives me x equals five over four to the four, and y equals five over four to the five. If we keep generating these values, I'm gonna get infinitely many values. So the famous result that I'm gonna use here is that the limit as n tends to infinity of one plus one over n to the n is e. That's Euler's constant, probably the most famous and useful constant in all of mathematics, even more so than pi, I would say. So we see that as n tends to infinity, the x-coordinates converge to e, but actually the y-coordinates do too, because the limit as n tends to infinity of one plus one over n to the n plus one, well, that's also e. Roughly speaking here, replacing n with n plus one doesn't really make very much difference, right? In fact, no difference at all in the limit because I'm just adding another factor of one plus one over n, but n is getting infinitely large. So we're multiplying by something that's basically one. You're right to be cautious about these things because of course, when I have this infinite limit, we end up with e, not just one, uh, but adding an extra one here doesn't make any difference. So the y coordinate here also converges to e. And I think this is quite remarkable because the points that we found have converged to a solution that's on that other line, y equals x. So our solution for n equals one is here at two, four. The one for n equals two, nine over four, 27 over eight is gonna be a bit closer uh, to this intersection here, for n equals three, four or five, etc. I'm going to be getting closer and closer here. So what I've found here is actually a sequence of rational points on this curve that get closer and closer to this intersection. That intersection at E E is the one that's on this line y equals x. And so we've also shown at the same time here that the point where these two lines intersect is the point with coordinates x equals e and y equals e and I think that's a really remarkable result. And if you enjoyed that I think you might also like this video solving a really interesting and challenging indices problem.